What is going on everyone and welcome to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna be going over how to chart stocks for beginners. We're gonna be going over at least what I use when it comes to my charting. We're also gonna be going over things like indicators that I use, are they worth your time? Should you pay attention to them? support resistance lines, how I use them, how I draw them in, and things like that. So real quick before we get started, if you would not mind going down, smashing the thumbs up button, and subscribing to the channel for more videos just like this. I'm gonna be using the Weeble desktop platform, so you can use pretty much whatever platform you would like. Um, some of the platforms that I would personally recommend would be Weeble, it's what I use. Um, it's pretty easy to use, great sign up bonus. So again, links are always down below to get two free stocks up to $1,600 in value for both of those stocks when you sign up deposit 100 bucks. So that's always an option. Um, there's also, you can use something like TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim's platform. You can use even E-Trade, and there's other offshore brokers as well. Um, those are probably my top recommendations, but you can't really do these things on a, a platform like Robinhood. Robinhood's more for like that longer term investor or beginner trader who really is just getting their feet wet. If you wanna take the next step up, we will would probably be my next best recommendation, honestly, because the trading hours are the best that you're gonna get. 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern, um, extended hours, full extended hours trading, of course, regular market hours trading as well. So that's why I like it a lot. That's why I would recommend it. So what I have, we're up, we're looking at SPY, SPY. So let's not, let's look, let's look at the stock that's a little bit more fun. Let's look at NIO. It's a recent stock that's been, you know, a lot of fun to watch as of late. So I'm going to look at the one hour chart. And what I want to start off here first and, and tell you, when it comes to charting stuff, so we went over the broker, you know, now it comes down to time frames. So each time frame is going to be different and it's going to have its own pattern and everything is going to kind of, you know, everything is going to be different for each time frame. So my recommendation in terms of time frames, I'm going to go through the time frames that I like to use, but it's really going to be what you like the most. So it doesn't really matter what I like, it's going to be up to you ultimately. But the time frames that I personally look at, so if I'm looking at a stock like NIO, I'm going to look at the one day. So looking at the the this symbol down here that has just a D, that is the daily chart. So each of these candles that I have is one day. Now, if you want to change the candles, you can go up into here to chart settings, and you can change from line, area to candle, hollow candle. I'd recommend either candle, hollow candle, or Heikinashi candles. If you don't know the differences, just look it up online. It's a quick Google search away. It's pretty simple to figure out. But so now I have some lines in here, and this is going to get a little interesting. So you guys can kind of see, you know, what we're doing here. Here's how to here, here's how I chart stocks, right? It's a pretty simple process. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to just see a trend before the before these lines are even there. You'll be able to just see a trend, and you know you can already draw those lines in your head, or you can start adding them in, um, and things kind of come a lot quicker as you start doing it more. So when I go through my time frames, I go daily chart, and then here's what you get. You get the daily chart, right? Then the four hour chart. The reason why I like four hours is because now there's a little bit more of you know action here. What you're going to see with four hours is you're actually going to see what happened in the after hours session. So what you may not see on a daily chart, you're not going to see what happens after hours. You'll see the gap ups, you'll see the gap downs, but the four hour chart is going to fill these gaps with what happened in between when it was technically like pre-market hours or after market hours. Because ultimately we do get a lot of movement during those times, especially for stocks that announce news and things like that. You'll get a lot of movement during the extended hours trading. So that's why I like the four hour is I would like the four hour after the daily chart. And then from the four hour, I won't really use the two hour too much. I like the one hour. And this is an example we're going to use here for the one hour. And here's how I kind of like to draw these lines in. And we'll go back out to the daily chart again to, to just get a better idea. But I'll start daily and then I'll zoom in on the time frames. So it depends. It ultimately depends on the time frame or the idea behind the trade. If it's a swing trade, what you're going to probably want to look at is the daily chart, the four hour, the one hour, maybe the 15 minute if you would like. You can kind of zoom in. But ultimately, the one day, one minute chart is that going to be like your best bet? Do you really care, to be honest, of those, you know, a couple cent fluctuations, you know, in, in the few minutes that you're looking at it? Probably not. You want to look at a broader view. So it really depends on your trade. If you're day trading, though, all these same kind of concepts will apply. It's just on a smaller time scale. So you can apply all this stuff to a, you know, a one day, one minute chart if you would like. Now, what I noticed here for NIO is that I noticed that we had this top area forming in. So what I did right here on Weeble, I go to my drawings tab right up on the top, and then I go down here and I go to horizontal line, and that'll just draw the horizontal line. I click once, and then boom, a horizontal line kind of shows up. So let me get rid of this guy because I don't really need this horizontal line. I already have one. So that's how you do that. And also for trend line, you can draw the trend line, vertical line, extended, and all other options here. I pretty much will stick to the horizontal and the trend line. That's how I pretty much will go about it. And then what I did was I also did a trend line here. So what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing a rough area. Now, of course, trading is an art, not an exact science. I'm always going to say that because if it always respected this line perfectly, right, 
that wouldn't it, that would make it too easy. So it, it never actually will do that. It's going to be close. So that's why you have this line, and many people also like to use ranges. So what you could also do is draw like two lines and draw like a top one and then draw one like right here and have like a, a rough range. Maybe it's like a dollar range, depending on the stock, you know, like a 1% range, right, as your top area of resistance. And what I want to see here and what we have been seeing, what I saw before this breakout was we came up here a bunch of times, a bunch of times, and then we couldn't break through. But also at the same time, we had these wicks down and we had these lower, you know, these, these lows, right? but each of these started to develop higher lows. So that's where I started to draw this other trend line. And what you wanna see is at least two to three kind of points on your line that hit. So for this, this top level trend, we have one point, pretty much two, three, and then you can probably even say four for that one right there, that piece right there. And for this, these higher lows that are developing, we have one, we have two, and then we have three hits. So if your line can hit three points, right, three kind of areas of the chart, then that there, there's a valid trend there, right? Of course, it's not going to always respect it because there could have been there could have been negative news that came out and, this, and the stock could have plummeted. And what happened here was there's actually positive news. The price target was upgraded and things like that. So that's what kind of broke it through the top line resistance. But that's what we were seeing. And so this is setting up for a nice breakout play. And so what you want to be doing when you notice a trend like this, when you notice the first two kind of, you can draw your trend line when you start to see two, you know, three points. And then if it happens again, then you can kind of respect that trend and buy towards the bottom of this trend line and then look for that breakout to the upside because this is actually a solid type of pattern where we're kind of coiling up we have a top line resistance that we got to break out not to mention this is going to break out to all-time highs higher lows developing we had an increasing price overall right the average price of the stock started to go up and then we eventually broke out to new highs and this is actually a pretty monster run from about $21 to $29 in just a few days now zooming out to the daily chart we can also see that there's a bigger trend here as well and so we can also put this trend line and we can draw this trend line to hit these levels. So what is this showing? This is showing support. We are sh are seeing that we are not, we're developing higher lows and we're not going below. We're not cracking below this trend line. Now, of course, we kind of did right here, but again, you want to see a couple points. You don't want to see candles forming and closing and, and opening and closing below. You want to see a candle wicking or a candle or two wicking below, which the wick is this little piece of the candle right here, this bottom or top part. A wick or two below is fine, but a full body or one or two full bodies closing below that line, then that trend line or that support line might not be as valid as you may be thinking. So this is a good this is a good way to go about it. This is an, a solid uptrending support. We have this top line resistance. And again, how do we develop? How do we know where we have support and resistance? Well, we have areas that we're not falling below for support, areas that we can't break above. That's resistance. So this is an area that we couldn't be tried a couple times, like I was just showing you when we zoomed it in. We couldn't break above. Now, also this support, you know, this is an uptrending, pretty, pretty, you know, a significant uptrend of a stock, but we're seeing multiple signs of support. Another stock that I want to talk about that comes down to support and resistance. I have a couple lines in, but don't really get too concerned. This is kind of more of a range, right? Like I was talking about before. So this is workhorse stock. We kind of came up, we had this area of resistance that we couldn't pass through. Came back, kind of consolidated, came back up, had some consolidate, broke through, consolidated. Now we broke through that prior area of resistance and then we came back down and, and showed that it was support. But we held a couple candles and then moved on the upside, hit this level, came back, boom, boom, kind of, you know, zigzagging, pop back up here. This now is showing us a resistance level because we have it a couple times. We hit this 30 to $31 area twice and we couldn't go above, we couldn't break above. But now this area right in here is showing us some serious signs of support at the time that I'm filming this video because it's been a couple times. We had this area right here. Now, of course, we had a, a more of a wick down. We have a, a pretty big candle down, but it recovered pretty quickly. And then one, two, three, four more times we tested this level. And so far, we've been holding up around that area. So that's showing me signs of support. Now we can develop you can put a bigger uptrend here if I wanted to come in here and draw a trend line. What I could do is come in here and draw something like this. This is actually a solid trend line that we're seeing as of right now on top of this horizontal line being support. So you can draw that in too. This is a pretty strong support area for right now on this stock because we have this trend line, right? We have a couple points here that it hits. It's hitting right here. We have now, we're gonna transition into the indicators part of this video, because we have this blue line, right? We have these other supports here, right? We have this blue line as well. So if I get rid of this little trend line, what's this blue line that I'm talking about right here? Now here's what it comes down to is the indicators. So 
For me, I personally don't rely on them too, too much, but the 50 SMA or the MA50 on Weeble, all you have to do is go to the indicators tab on the top, and then you can edit indicators and come in here and I have videos going over I kind of do this uh, more in, in depth if you guys want to check that out. But then you can come in and have these indicators set up on your chart. Now for me, I like the 50 SMA and the 200 SMA. That's this, the MA50 and the MA200 on the daily chart to be areas of support and resistance. When you're above it, area of support. When you're below, it's an area of resistance generally. Now, not every stock will respect it the same exact way, but for me, it's worked out to be a pretty solid area in the past that has worked pretty well if you can't find support or if you need some more confirmation on support. So what are we also seeing here for Workhorse? We came down, we had you know a touch to this 50 SMA, popped up. We had a touch right here, little pop, and we touched it again. So we'll see if it holds up again, but it's showing some signs of support. So those are the indicators that I will use when it comes to this. And again, on the daily chart. Every indicator is gonna have a different kind of time range that it fits it best for me and for what I do and for my swing trades, I found this to be a good area or a good indicator to use for the daily chart. You can use other indicators like the MACD. I have the RSI showing me we're oversold, overbought, overbought generally over 70, oversold I believe under 30 on the RSI. Not a huge deal when it comes to charting to be honest. When it's charting, you really wanna be focused and I think the, the main case here to charting is focused on finding areas finding multiple spots on a chart that you can draw a horizontal line for support of resistance or a trend line and hit the bottom or the top of a candle or the wicks multiple times. Find multiple points on that chart that can hit. And again, if you can do so, then you have a trend. Now, of course, every trend is not gonna be the exact same. Every stock is not gonna hold up a certain trend the exact same. So you're gonna have that stuff to, to uh, also you know factor in but it's a great idea and a great place to start. So when it comes to finding areas for entries, for exits, now you kind of know, you wanna be looking to buy around support. If we do drop through support, okay, what's your risk? You risk maybe a couple percent to the downside. If it falls through, I'm gonna get out. But if you're looking to buy at support, selling towards resistance, and then if you wanna be holding through resistance, if we get that breakout, like we saw with NIO, well, then you can sell some of your shares here at the top of the resistance or at this resistance level for, for this stock, for example. And if it does break out, hold some as well for that eventual run further to the upside. And one last thing before we wrap it up, I have this downtrend. So you can also do this thing for downtrends. It doesn't have to just be uptrends. So what we're seeing is that we hit this top line a couple times here on this downtrend. We broke out of this downtrend and we had a nice little reversal on up and then had this resistance up here. So it can get complicated, but at the same time, this is also really good to see. If we see a downtrend or a trend break, right? We break this trend line, right? We break this uptrend. We break this downtrend that we're seeing. What you'll like to likely see is a reversal to the other side, whether it's to the downside or to the upside. In this case, it was to the upside, but that's another thing you also want to be looking for too. Trend breaks will signal a new trend developing, or we just simply fall out of the trend we were expecting. And now that no longer means that's a valid trend or a valid trade for that specific stock at that point. Hope that made some sense. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way. Please leave any questions, comments below. If you have any questions about Weeble setting it up, how to get this to look like this, I have a Weeble playlist on the channel so you can check that out. Again, link down below to get two free stocks when you sign up, deposit $100 into your Weeble account. You'll get access to this for free. The trading platform's free. Extended hours trading from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern and also NASDAQ Total View Level 2 for your first three months when you sign up. Appreciate every single one of you guys who are still watching this video. Make sure to leave a like on the video down below and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next.